on this episode, the winners join me. Let's clap it up. Vey Nurchuk, and this is episode 125 of the Ask Gary V Show. It's a glorious Friday here. I've had some good meetings. I actually woke up in Detroit. Actually, you know what happened today? It was the first time in forever for all the insanity that is my life in traveling that I woke up 4.45 a.m. that I woke up and wasn't sure where I was. Like rolled out, <laughs> literally, <laughs> Mike, I hope you're not watching, literally rolled out of bed and I was like, oh, I gotta go work out. I'm like, oh no, wait, I'm in Detroit. I gotta fly and then go work out. So uh, that is going on. Nothing else, nothing too out of the ordinary otherwise except a packed house. Let's, let's get a little, uh, here we go, let's get a little bit of a, a roam on who's in the room and then I'm gonna allow, allow the three newbies uh, in the room to introduce themselves because obviously today is the day that we, uh, that we are uh, announcing uh, or, or, or displaying the winners of the contest to come. Today is the special day that is the, today is the official one, so one year, actually you know what, I'm pumped everyone's here because truth is I think we did this once before somewhere 60 episodes ago, let's just do it one more time and then we'll let you three wonderful winners introduce yourselves to the Vayner Nation. What happened to go a year ago today? Still, should we go to Steve here, I think? <laughs> it was one of those like Gary emails that was all on the subject line and it's like guys, we're gonna do a daily YouTube show again, let's do this. That was really it. And we were yeah. like, all right. There was, I remember at the beginning yeah. of the year, it was like, this is gonna be the year of YouTube, and then you like went off on a bunch of other stuff, and we're like, oh, I guess not YouTube. And then all of a sudden, it was just like, we're doing YouTube again. Well, it's because we hired D-Rock. Yeah. I, yeah. Like D-Rock, you were, you were how long in at this point? A month in. And so what, what had, had, you could go to D-Rock. Yeah. And had we, uh, and D-Rock, you can go to me, because you can like, you know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, D-Rock, what, what happened, like, did you and I, have we, had we been like flirting with the idea? No. <laughs> you, you came into the room, you're like, we're gonna do a talk show, and I was like, okay. And you're like, face the camera this way, I'm like, okay. And, uh-huh. and there was. And so, a year ago today, uh, we did this. Hey everybody, welcome to the first hashtag Ask Gary V. I think it's the first one, but I actually do think I tried to do this once before. I feel like I've got the team now in place to actually do this more often. So here we go. And obviously we'll do a little clip there for a couple of seconds. I, we should be black and white here. Uh, of the show. All right, good. Uh, all right, so we did a contest for this amazing one year anniversary of the Ask Gary V show. 125 episodes in one year. Not too shabby considering weekends involved, five days a week, you know, you're talking about 250 days or whatever it really is, 52, you know. It's, you're talking about a really solid level of commitment to the show, something I always like to talk about, people giving up. I always talk about it being a year and a half before Wine Library TV really clicked. Every day, it was five days a week. Um, uh, this commitment's been pretty good. I've been, I'm, a, I'm a hell of a lot busier than I was when I started Wine Library TV and so to get to this level, I'm pretty proud. So let's get into the introductions. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation, you can pass that to somebody else on the Meerkat. Why don't you tell the, uh, why don't you tell the uh, Vayner Nation who you are and, and why don't we give you guys each kind of like 30 seconds to do whatever you want with it. You can juggle, take your shirt off, to <laughs> pr- promote. You can do whatever the hell you want, so. Thanks, Gary. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm Dallas Hutchinson at uh, D. Hutchinson RE on Twitter. It's gonna be down here. <laughs> yes. and, uh, it's nice to have people also, that know the show. Dallas sure. Hutchinson on Instagram, that might be up here. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I'm a real estate entrepreneur uh, from Southern California. And uh, I'm just honestly happy to be here. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what I do or what my hook or what my angle was to get on the show. Quite frankly, I knocked it out in 10 minutes with my thumbs. Uh, I wrote from the heart and now here I am. So that's, uh, that's all I got. If you want to check out my homes, it's DallasHutchinson.com. And uh, no, thanks Gary. Yeah, when did, you, when did you, tell me about your journey to the show. Like, show oh, yesterday? No. no. <laughs> 
that was a journey in itself. Really? Yeah. You could do that on your own fucking blog. There we go. Uh, <laughs> no, no. What, when did you discover the show? How did you discover the show? Uh, well, I was. Um, I don't know how long I've been following you, but uh, I've seen every episode. I've definitely been following you probably since March-ish, somewhere around there. I don't remember how I found you. I just remembered from the first 30 seconds of whatever show I caught, I said, this guy is not fucking around. He's not trying to sell me anything. He's not full of shit. He has an incredible amount of energy. He talks very quickly like I do. I just instantly could relate. You, ta you tasted it that fast. It, that quick. It's awesome, man. Glad you're here. Awesome. All right. Now, the ladies' corner. Get out of here, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, get back here, Zach. <laughs> that hat is amazing. How are you, darling? Great, how are you? Good. Why don't you tell everybody who you are? Hey, guys, my name is Webley Alfred from WebleyAlfredDesign.com, where I help small business owners eliminate tech issues and nail it on social media. Did you like the plug? I did, I did. It was right, very radio. Awesome. You were very radio, Webley. Thank you. So, uh, so how did you? How do you think you? How did you enter the contest? What was your strategy? Two thumbs, th ten minutes. How did you roll? Actually, um, I entered the contest. I checked my email after a long day of work, and um, I thought it was an interesting question. And I just finished reading Crush It, and the first thing that came to my mind was how I could relate to you, to your family as immigrants. And I just it answered worked. the first thing that came to my mind. I love it. And how about how about the show? How did you uh, <laughs> how, how did you uh, how did you find it? How did you the show? How long have um, you been following? I found out about the show um, when your book Jab Jab mm -hmm. Right Hook came out, and I said, "Let me find out about this guy." And the first um, video, I was like, "You know, finally, somebody who is telling it like it is, who's not sugarcoating it, who's saying the truth that you need to put some hustle out there." And I was hooked. Awesome. I was hooked. Awesome. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, my man. Let me, I don't know. Do 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 don't worry, D-Rock knows what to do. Yeah, That's it, he's got you. You yeah. stay right there. Stay here. You stay there. I'll, I'll, we'll connect we'll talk, through, we'll, we'll, we'll hold hands. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, my name's Matthew Chame, at uh, Matthew Chame on everything. Uh, so follow me there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm, we're going to do this whole yeah. thing. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, mainly a musician, a singer and rapper, songwriter. Um, and I also dabble in some video making and marketing. So uh, wearing a few hats. Um, and yeah, how I found you. I read that book right there, Jab, mm -hmm. Jab, Jab, Right Hook, and loved it. And then found the show a few months later. And I didn't, I didn't get addicted to it right away. I'd watch it a bit here and there, but I wasn't so into it. My, one of my coworkers, my boss is actually really into it. He, he turned me on to it. Is he and super pissed that you're here? He, he's not because he's not this type of guy. Like he doesn't yeah. want to be, he's, watch, he's gonna it. watch this, he's gonna love yeah. it. So he's actually like yeah. so honestly yep. excited for yeah. me because he's not the extroverted he's type. He's behind the camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's, he's like Sidney He's living vicariously, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, and it, it, it honestly taught me a lesson on consistency because you kept doing it. And then I start, I was like, oh my God. Like, and then I started watching it more and more and more until it became like a habit. Like it's like a daily habit now to check if there's a new video. Um, and yeah, I went all the way back, watched everything, and yeah, absolutely. Awesome, brother. Glad you're here, Matt. Is uh, Meerkat working? Crashed? It's Meerkatting. It's Meerkatting. It's <laughs> Got it. All right. D-Rock, you're out of it today. Yep. <laughs> Matthew's in. All right, well, with that, that's tremendous. I'm glad the Vayner Nation now knows you three. I'm super pumped for you guys. This is a day that I will always remember. I love this. Maybe we'll do this again in another 100 episodes if we're still doing the show. With that, Webley, this is a very exciting part. It is. Webley, let's get into... The show. The show. <laughs> the show. All right. Cool. Okay, the first question is from Ember. Amber. Amber says, if you lost everything today, what's the first thing you would do to rebuild? Uh, what would be the first, the, so the first thing that, you know, this is a tough question because I'm trying to give you guys the truth in parallel with what like would be valuable. Meaning, what I would do if I lost everything, you know, it, it's an interesting question. There's two versions of it. I lost everything because I actually just bet big. Let's say, for example, with Snapchat's last round, I really, really came close to betting the biggest I've ever bet, meaning if I would lose, it would have really hurt. Like, hurt as in like changed my lifestyle. I've never made a bet that would change my lifestyle before and I almost considered it. 
Um, I didn't because that's just been my consistent theme. And it was funny. I got to think about that a little bit. You know, I, I think I spoke, or maybe this was, I spoke to the interns. DRock, was this with the interns when I told them like how secretly I did want to go to Zero? I think, yeah. well, yeah. So we didn't do we hit this on the show. Like, I'm very comfortable going back to a studio apartment in Queens. Like, like Rock, Rocky Six or whatever the hell it was, where he's like back in the same place. I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like everyone's like, oh. Like, I'm like, no, I don't like Rocky Three where he's got a fucking robot butler. I like Rocky Six where he's back. <laughs> to zero because I'm comfortable in that zone. I'm comfortable in all environments. I'm not comfortable because it might be tough for my kids and my family and all those things. Let's make pretend I lost everything including my name and reputation, right? Because if I was to lose something today, you know, I'd still have my name and reputation. It'd be interesting because I would be at zero or really in this bad place and here I am. Am I in a position to dole out advice? One of the things that I think I've I think I've earned the ability for you three to listen to me because unlike, I think, the thing that you're all referring to which is finally somebody saying, (laughs) it's because I'm not just entertaining. It's not because I read Napoleon Hill and decided to be like influential on someone. It's because I actually did something first and I just happen to talk about how I did it and then I'm very consistent down the line and then you can figure out what's like that with you and what's not like that with you and how to, I try to create a line that everyone can navigate around. I don't say do it like me, I'm special. I'm charismatic, I'm left right, right left brain, right brain. I, I have disproportionate amount of hustle in my body. Like I've got talent for days, I'm special. And everybody else is special in what they're good at too. Like I don't know these stupid lights that DRock has, right? Like I don't have a duck fucking tattoo on my arm. I'm not that creative, right? <laughs> and so like listen, what is it? It's a loon. It's a loon. I don't have a I don't <laughs> And therein lies the point. And so and so I think that um you know, if I started from zero with uh, without my reputation I would do a couple of things. One, I would get a nine to five job. So that's a little bit of a curveball because I need to establish some sort of cash flow, right? I would literally do that for one psychological reason because I would have to teach Lizzie and my kids that like, like look, clearly what I've been selling and preaching, I've made a really bad turn on and I'm gonna show you that I'm not beneath like you know, that. Now, I think within a month, I'd probably be selling on eBay to subsidize what that was. Um, but more, more importantly, what I'm trying to really figure out here as a tangible piece of advice is if somebody's watching right now, and it's funny, the, the audience is getting younger and younger. Uh, I'm, I'm paying attention to who's resonating with me. I think there's a lot of people that are at a very low kind of financial point in their careers, definitely reputation point in their careers low. I think the thing that I would do is I would bet on what I'm good at, which is I'm good at selling stuff. So I, I do think that I know how to make $100,000 a year, which is a load of money. Let's just get it very calculated. 99% of the people watching the show probably don't make that much money. Like, let's get it calibrated. I know how to make $100,000 a year by garage selling 52 weekends a year. I just do. I know how to go to Goodwill and <laughs> Salvation Army and garage selling and then flipping things on eBay. And so I'd probably do that first, um, start using some of that cash to start an e-com business using the money that I make in garage selling to sell stuff online, um, something that's more scalable than the garage sale stuff, a product probably. I, it's so weird. It's so funny. Notice what I'm just doing. Like I just realized in real life, I'm literally replicating what I did. I was a merchant hustler kid, like, and then I went and sold a tangible product in e-com, and then I would just probably replicate my life. And so, um, I, and it's interesting. It's interesting that I didn't even realize that it, I was saying that until just this moment. So that's what I would do. I would start by slinging some stuff ad hoc. Then I would create a scalable selling product using the best practices, um, and that, that's what I would do. Cool. Good. It's a great segue. It's a great segue? We totally rocked it. Yeah. Gary, yeah. Also just, oh, yes. Your 1230 just canceled. My 1230 just canceled. Huge. <laughs> Lack of pressure. <laughs> Lack of pressure. Actually, I didn't like that. You shouldn't have told me. I like when I. Sorry, Gary. You may, you may have just. You just for men. Got it. Okay. Okay. Next question from Charles. What would you do in a world where money had no value? Where you couldn't sell? Wow. <laughs> where, I mean, I'm gonna throw a lot of people for a curveball here. I actually wish that existed. I actually think that I would be even more successful. I think, I have, I think I'm doing fine financially. I'm actually, 
in my behavior, I wish my account was here, and not that he, I mean, I'm conservative, way more than people think. I, I don't value the dollars that much. I'm not extra, I, we should go into James's office right now of all the money I'm leaving on the table at VaynerMedia because I like the feelings and all the other things that come along in life. I actually think that if the world had no money that I would be more successful. Because I think, and I've alluded to this, that my ability to communicate to people and to story tell and to inspire and motivate uh, is maybe my disproportional skill. And that if I wasn't drawn to like running businesses, that I would be absolutely in hype man P. Diddy or preacher or like, like you know, I, I push very hard against my motivational aspect because I don't want to be bucketed into a motivational speaker because I do think that it's the cliche thing that we talked about earlier that you two really hit on and I'm scared that people struggle to cut through the noise which is why I'm impressed with the, you know it's funny, you two really, you two are the most interesting for me because you're both the parallels that happen with me, right? There's only one third person, it wasn't your story, it would've been perfect, of the three versions of my content that's put out. Instantaneous understanding, perseverance, but liked it up front, but it was perseverance and at some level, thank God you're not this, but like the, this guy's full of shit and then I just eventually got there and won that game, right? So I actually think that if the world was stripped of money that I would be dramatically more impactful on society and, and, a, and a lot of times, you know, the weirdest and only scenario that ever goes through my mind, ever, of me not buying the New York Jets, ever, ever, is that somewhere along the line, the chemicals inside tweak just enough to where I become guilted by myself to give up that part of my journey to triple down on the other part of my journey AK this, it's a funny story. Somebody sent me an email yesterday and said they were disappointed in me for sending the email and creating the contest of asking for the books to be in the question. And I sat there with the question for like 20 minutes. I said, my God, I will never win this game because people are unable to see one level deep. <laughs> I'm, not, like, like, I'm not forcing people to buy that book. I'm putting out a show every single day that is free in a world where plenty of people monetize video content and you're more than welcome not to participate in that part of it and I am picking 500 other questions to put in there and it's just interesting that there's so little breathing room for any kind of commerce to some people in a world where you can provide disproportionate upfront value and people want you to be stuck in the jab, 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 jab world and I'm, I'm wired as a jab, 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 right hook guy. If money was taken out and the game of business was stripped, I would then have less of a right hook mentality of commerce. My right hook would be then to get people to actually do it. So I'd be like chasing all of you around and being like, no, you gotta go do it. Now, you, motivation isn't enough. Um, and so I, I actually think the answer to your question in a long-winded way is um, I'd be really happy and really successful in communicating to the world my points of view. Love it. Love it. Cool. Let's go, Webley. Speed it up. My pond asked. I think it's a waste. Mike? Yep, Mike. Okay. I think it's a waste of my time to comment on your videos and answer the question of the day. Tell me why I'm wrong. Well, Mike, let me help you tell you why you're wrong. Here we go. Um, no, I think it's a really interesting question and I think that, uh, you know, Mike, I think it's a great question and I think that uh, there's a couple of things to figure out here. One, I'm gonna assume, maybe not, that one of the good reasons to think what you think and I think a lot of other people think there is because I'm not reading them, right? Like why say something if it's not being consumed? I think a lot of people recognize I do read them um, because I'm engaging quite a bit. Not on YouTube, which is, is because of the app and because I have an awkward sign-in structure on Google between Gary at VaynerMedia and the account we use for a lot of the Google content. I have to figure that out. So I, I would comment more because now it's all mobile. Like I only comment mobily. So I've got to figure that out, but quite a bit on Twitter outrageous levels on Facebook in the last month or so. Um, more on YouTube, I will figure it out, I'll use this as a call to action. But now I'm gonna give you a really good answer to your question. The reason you're actually gonna start commenting. It's because I have nothing to do with the equation of what's actually happening here. Let me explain. Oh, that's not fair. 
I do have something to do with it. I'm the match of what's happening with the Ask Gary B show. But the truth is, to really get what I want out of it, I want to build a community. A community cannot be built predicated on a dictatorship or an individual. It needs to be predicated on the fact that people are communicating with each other. What you haven't realized yet, Mike, is that if you look deeply to what's going on on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, there is a group of 30 to 40 people that are quietly and subtly, and I would say of those 40 people, 25 are doing the wrong version of it, which they're in there communicating with the other people for their own interest in mind to siphon them into, if Webley was to do that, she's in there because she wants some of the other small business people to take her services and that's all she wants in a right hook, right hook, right hook, right hook way. 25 of you, I'm paying attention, are playing that game. 15 of you are not. You're playing more of a jab, 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 right hook game. And let's just remind everybody, jab, 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 right hook to that person that emailed and said they were disappointed in me, that is a game that plays like this. Jab, 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 right hook. The right hook is not you get the sale. The right hook is you've been given the permission to have a chance to sell. So when you jab, 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 and right hook, you go for your right hook, but you're not disappointed. I have not even asked any single person here what the update is on how many books have come in. I'm just, it's just not the part, it's the permission that it created, not necessarily what the results are just yet. And so, uh, the real reason you should be commenting on the show is because you'd start putting out content on your two cents in context of what was just put out in the show format. Other people that are in the trenches are actually reading those comments, plenty. More of you should be. And then you start engaging with each other. And out of that serendipity, much like on Wine Library TV, where there are over 20 different wine tasting groups right now that have been hanging out with each other for the last seven to 10 years, drinking wine together, one set of every once a month for, on every third Wednesday for the last five years and have built their disproportionate best friends out of being part of a community of a web show started by some kid in New Jersey talking about wine. The community that's being built underneath here, the way that these three get to interact with each other for the rest of their lives on this connection point and the way that you guys all have the ability, if you'd like to, to create connections of like-minded, people with very different angles and to have an interesting situation, unlike politics or religion or other things, where you have a guy who's a paradox, which then creates fan bases in opposite directions, so it's not a complete sheep game, but yet people that can actually have empathy for other people's points of view and collaborate, you now have the beginnings of a community that has value to you, that has nothing to do with the person that's putting out the content. That, my friend, is why you should be commenting. You like that, India? You like that? We're into clapping these days. Yeah. Got it. They say you look bored. I look bored? That's what they're saying. That's just my face. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is a video. Okay, let's take it. Oh, Draymond. Draymond. Look at this. <laughs> Hold on, show this guy's outfit as this is playing. I didn't know, I swear. <laughs> What's up, Gary V? It's Draymond Green. Um, I've kind of been keeping up on your Facebook and your Twitter, and you know, I saw where people were struggling with identifying your passion as opposed to calling it cockiness. You know, along with passion comes confidence, and I understand that well because I'm the same way when it comes to what I do. I was just wondering, how do you handle that? Um, it's something that I've dealt with my whole life, you know, where most some people don't understand that your love for something or your passion for what you're doing, it shines through and people have a hard time understanding that. So I wanted to know what is it that you do to cope with that? What is it that you do to try to help people better understand that? I think that can also help take me in the next level to the next level in what I do. And I want to just find out how it is that you handle that. I look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you. All right, world champ Draymond Green on the show. Stefan, you must really like it. It's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Draymond. I think, you know, uh, first of all, thanks for watching the show. Um, show. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I have a feeling, and I've watched from afar how you've been handling this as well, because you've clearly established yourself, especially with the Golden State Warriors run to a championship this year. A lot more people are aware of you, and, um, and you definitely come with a lot of confidence and bravado. And it's really interesting, right? 
your story connects with me because you're an undersized power forward who sometimes guards centers in the NBA. And now, I just read an article the other day that everybody in the off season is talking about finding their Draymond Green in the NBA. That you've been mentioned more than LeBron this off season about how small ball can work and this. You've literally, through self confidence, perseverance, I also know a little bit about how your mother raised you, so I caught that part of your narrative. That's interesting to me. I think we actually connect pretty well. As a matter of fact, I actually think that you and I should play one on one in an episode of the Ask Gary V show just to see if it's humanly possible for me to score a point. I think this is one of the things that I love about. about uh, people that think they can play NBA players on one-on-one. I actually think that people don't realize how pretty consistent an NBA player against anybody who never went past high school level basketball can shut them out 11 nothing in a one-on-one game. So like, I would be super pumped if I could score points. So Draymond, that challenge is on. I think you might duck me because I think you're scared and you know we're gonna film it. But, <laughs> to answer your question, to answer your question in full, um, I think, uh, I think you just have to do you, and I think that's what you're doing. I, I think I talk about the truth being undefeated. I, I'm a 39-year-old man. You're, you're in your 20s, uh, early, mid-20s, you know, early, uh, you know, 20s. I, I know that you and I, and everybody in this room, and everybody watching and listening to the show, we all want, we all think about who we are. From you know, social media has been really interesting to me because I think social media has been the first tangible expression of how everybody wants to PR themselves to the world. Even the people that poo-poo it or try to play you know like too cool for school or like don't believe in it, they don't understand subconsciously every single piece of content that every person has ever put out on social media has been absolutely thought through and is, and not like you're not thinking about it, it's been thought through subconsciously. It is the action and results of the narrative that you've been painting in your mind your whole life of who you are, who you want to be, the ambition that you want. I have outrageous, disproportionate want to be considered one of the great businessmen of all time and want to be known about how I did it and the way I treated people along the way. I am very far away from that. For as much as you guys love me, and as much as, you have to understand, 99% of the world has no idea who I am. I have still not amassed the kind of wealth that can give me the halo effect to talk about it being a tangible execution to that level. And so, I'm still so far away. But, I know at 80, my actions are gonna basically be the result of my wants. And I, and I think you want to be great and you've already at such a young age hit the apex of your career so you've got a different game than I do. But I think, you know, along with like he's cocky or he's this or, or she's cocky and she's that comes all the stories behind the scenes that people don't know. That I sh- I'm sure And I'm not sure, I hope that behind the scenes you're doing these things for fans and behind the scenes when your competitor beats you even though you've put everything to it, there's, as much as I hate the Patriots, as much as you might hate that you got knocked out of playoffs, there's a, even if you're kind of sour about it and I get sour, like if if I lose 11 nothing, I won't even like shake your hand even though I'm telling you to shake that person's hand in my advice right now. Like, (laughs) it's, it's really there, it's that respect level to the game. I think as long as you respect the game and respect, and this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. I respect where I'm at right now because it's the game. Like, I could think maybe I'm slightly behind. I could think, you know, I should be a little further along. I'm just not. And it's a net net game. And so I think that you want people to see you as self confident, not egotistical. You want people to see that you're working hard, that you're not cheap in the trenches. So those actions just have to be that way, right? They just have to be that way. And so for me, uh, I think you just do you and let the chips fall where they may. And, uh, and I have a funny feeling you're okay with what they're saying along the way as long as you feel good about it and for me that's my game too. Plenty of people say things uh, and uh, I just feel good about it. I feel real damn good about it because I'll see you. I'll see you soon and we'll talk about it. Cool. Love it. Next one, Tali. Mitali. Sounds like from the old, uh, from the old country, where, where I come Gary, from. Yes. If Tom Brady asked you a question on how to get out of his mess, what would you tell him? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is tough. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, I, I actually, uh, I actually had a very interesting moment with myself yesterday. Obviously, maybe some of you saw this picture. 
And a lot of people then put out like, did Gary Vee pay the plane to fly over Boston and say look up cheaters? And it was funny, <laughs> I was sitting there and I had very, very, in 2000, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. In 2008, in the midst of Wine Library TV exploding, somebody, it was the first time that I was starting to get attention at any kind of level outside of a small circle. And it was, I don't know if it was an article or a conversation, I don't remember. But I read something about the notion of was that this person or, or this story I read was talking about becoming a caricature of yourself. And it really hit me and I was saying to myself, huh, am I forcing the narrative on, like am I becoming more hyperbolized, more energetic, more intense to pander to what the audience is giving me? Am I becoming a caricature of myself? And I don't if I've ever really answered it, right? Like it's really, it's, it was very difficult. For somebody that's really in tune, I was really struggling to unpeel the banana and be like, am I, am I? And, and it's interesting, um, I'm starting to, you know, like if that really, ha- like what if it really happened, right? We just had a, a famous athlete ask a question one second ago. Like what if Tom Brady hit me up and asked me like, would I be like, oh Tom, I wish, your, I wish your leg fell off your body? The answer is no, I'm just, I'm not that human, right? And the truth is, it's actually very hard for me to be upset with an athlete, even though that's where I get sports muscles, aka, you guys know what beer muscles are, right? Somebody gets drunk and they wanna fight, I get sports muscles. I'm at a sporting event, I wanna fight. But outside of it, especially right now, in non-football season, I feel like I'm almost becoming a caricature of myself outside the football environment of hating the Patriots, and, and it was really interesting. I literally thought about that yesterday. And so, being honest with myself, if he hit me up and asked me a question, I'd probably give him the best sound advice that I could. And I'd try because there's still a good part, as I was just about to say that, there was a part of my, there's a part of me like, I can, this is the moment where I can finally put the nail in the coffin and sabotage him. I mean, the truth is, he's getting close to the end of his career. It's funny, Kobe hated him my whole life. Like, just hated him, sorry. Uh, but now kind of root for him because he's an underdog. I love underdogs, right? And I think Tom is the complete and utter reverse of that in our society today and in my division. So it makes me very easy to uh, dislike him. Look, he destroyed his phone systematically to conceal the evidence. Nobody in public domain, no matter what he does, is going to believe him. So many people over and over talk about the fact that people don't, care that much about the crime, they care about the cover up. Like it's unbelievable what America does with the cover up versus the actual crime. Literally probably right up to where it gets to the ultimate. Like a murder, I don't think we're like all right. But like underneath that, I mean there's like, I think we can all, I don't need to say them out loud, there's four to five things in society that can be done where it, the, the, the issue is the issue. But boy, all those thousands of other things they're actually things we're bo- more than willing to let go away because we have all have empathy to know that we're not perfect and we all have our skeletons in our closets. It's when you try to trick us. After we, the collective United States, the collective world, have put you on such a pedestal and you've been rewarded with the riches that come along with that. And so I would say to him to have empathy and, and to understand why it's happened um, and, and and I would probably tell him, which sucks, but this is what I tell him. I'd probably tell him, look, the truth is, the more you fight this, the worst. You know, the more you approach it with empathy, it is what it is. The chips have fallen. I, you know, you're probably too emotional or passionate to apologize or admit. I don't think you have to do that. I think you just have to go neutral for a long enough period of time. And I don't think anybody cares 24 months ago, from now, other than passionate patriot and anti-patriot fans that debate this for the rest of your career out of. Fond, you know, fondness of debating around sports. That's probably what I would tell them. That's it? That's it. That's it? All right. So uh, with that, I hope everybody has a tremendous weekend. Thought that was a really good show. I mean, clearly, because it's the, I need a, I'm going to need a graphic here for this, Zach, because it's the golden era. Dallas, you know what? You just happen to have the right spot to do this. Yes. I'm going to allow you to ask the question of the day. Okay. Um, and so... You don't have as much time as you think, go. Right. My question today is this, what motivates you to do what you do? It's a good one, very solid. Way to know the audience. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for recording the show. Thank you. Thanks for asking questions on the show. Thank you. (laughs) You keep asking questions, I'll 
keep answering them. That guy taking over my job. Not cool. I'm on top of the ocean, living like life ain't frozen, feeling my feet been chosen for something other than motion, yeah. Mama told me I'ma be somebody, I ain't never gonna need nobody, no, no, I ain't never gonna need nobody, no cliffhanger, yes, I so do banger, I'm the new Mick Jagger, I'm the new Mick Jagger. Didn't do it for the girls. Do it for the money, didn't do it for the fame. Now I do. 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 Now I do.